All right, well, welcome back, everybody. If you watched my last episode, I ended it by telling you there was something I was pretty excited about and really wanted to show you out in the garden. So we're about to go right over and take a quick peek at that. I just want to say thank you all again for spending your time watching the channel. It sure means a lot. Like I said, it help keep, keeps me motivated, keeps me excited about things. So uh, a lot of things coming up. Things are getting exciting. I'm so happy that I get to share that with you all. And uh, thanks again for subscribing, the comments. It means a lot. Let's go check this garden out. I really want to show you something. All right, y'all, I do apologize. You can obviously tell it is not the same time of day as what I was just shooting. It's because I went inside to edit the video and realized somehow I've managed to delete what I recorded earlier. But what I really want to show y'all that's pretty exciting is uh, the weeding results. Literally 24 hours later, I mean, look, it looks amazing. Looks like I sprayed this with weed killer, but check the garden out. This is awesome. This looks like I sprayed it weeks ago with weed killer. This is nuts. I just was not expecting this kind of results right here. So the propane weeder is awesome. I do see some of it starting to green back up in some spots. So I'm gonna sweep over it again really quick. That's the awesome thing about it. I sweeped over this so stinking fast and it's killing it off like just, I'm, I'm, I mean, this blows my mind. It looks like I sprayed it two weeks ago with glyphosate, but this is 24 hours later. So I'm loving the results. I'm gonna sweep it over it again real quick, kill some of this fresh stuff that's coming up. And uh, then here in the next few weeks, we'll layer it with chip mulch and really suppress all the weeds and grass and keep it killed off. Then I'll just do spot treatment in the future. So I still gotta do this whole area back here. That shouldn't take long. I'll sweep it quickly. Sweep through this again, burn up the uh, grass that's already starting to dry up. But I am amazed with the results here. Love a propane weeder. Like I said, I've always just done perimeters around uh, around things, you know, just edging. But uh, it really works. It works for big areas too. Just takes a little while. But um, this whole area that you're seeing right here, just trying to take my time, I think I have 30 to 45 minutes in it. So I'm really happy with what I see here. Well, the wind keeps blowing my stuff over. It's been so windy. Of course, that's typical this time of year, but Tiffany keeps surprising me. She keeps coming home with more and more, well, projects for me to do. So I've got to find even more time now. So now I have to find a place out here and I've always wanted kind of a little orchard place for fruit trees, etc. So now I've got to find room for my, my lime, my lemon, my loquat, a peach tree. She just brought home mulberry trees, mulberry bushes, whatever you want to call them. I've got grapevines. I've got blueberries over here. And she just took off to the nursery again to pick up several more blueberries. And uh, what else was she going to get? Maybe a Bradford pear. Something else. So before long, she's going to have this place overgrown with fruit trees. So... I'm getting into the gardening. She's getting into the fruit tree. So we'll have a lot more of that coming up here soon. I'm tired of these blowing over back here. I want to get them planted, but got to work on the fence first. I talked in the last episode about some of these uh, very light duty tomato cages that I ordered, but they were very good price. I think I paid a dollar something for them shipped off of Amazon, just killer deal. But I like to put tomato cages around my peppers because they're starting to get to the height now where they can get blown over pretty easy and once they get peppers on them they fall over very easy so that was a killer deal i just could not pass up so i'm gonna go ahead and throw a few tomato cages around my bell peppers
tell y'all what, I've done got hot. It's time to get my Florida attire. So what I'm gonna do now is actually space out some string and figure out where my fence has gotta go. I'm gonna be extremely close on the amount of wire that I have back here. So I wanna make sure that it fits, measure it out, get me a straight line, paint where I wanna put my post, and uh, make sure I have enough fence wire. I had to go back by another 100 feet just because I wanna make it five foot bigger. So I'm gonna measure it out and kinda of get a feel for it and make sure I can fit a grapevine in here and a few blueberries. Tell you what, this 100 foot tape has wound up being like an excellent straight line, straight edge. Well, kind of more like a chalk line. I'm able to pull it tight, ease it over, and go take the tape measure and measure off each bed until I get the exact straightness I want. Plus, it's a good visual aid. I can go ahead and line it up visually. And uh, I'm getting within about a half an inch just doing that. Well, about an inch and a half. So this is working out excellent. I don't know if you can see the tape measure, but I've got it set up exactly uh, the width that I want for the walking path. So I'm just going to pull my tape tight until I bump that tape measure, and then I know it's pretty well spot on. I'll drive my corner post down. All right, so I doubt you can see this little old string here on camera, but uh, it gives me a nice visual aid now. Got my corners marked out. I can go walk inside the string, make sure that's just the right walking path. Now I can measure out my post. I can throw some paint on the ground for where I'm gonna drill my post. So uh didn't take but just a few minutes. And uh, I like, like I said, I like the nice little visual aid that it gives you. The other thing that I really like is this back area. I'm trying to figure out if I have enough space. Because deer love to eat blueberries and uh, other critters like coons like to eat on the grapevines, foxes. We got all that stuff around here. Just want to make sure I had enough room to do a row of blueberries, some nice space, and then a uh, small grapevine there. So it looks like that should work out really well. As far as all my fruit trees go, I'm gonna put them outside the fence. Uh, a lot of these trees grow up really big. I don't want them in here shading the garden out. I don't mind if they cast shade that way. And uh, a lot of those type of fruit trees, the animals shouldn't really bother.
All right, what I'm doing now is figuring out where I want my post to go for my gate that's gonna swing right here in my opening. All right, now what I'm doing is going back and figuring out where I want my post. And I knew that I wanted them about every eight feet. It just so happens I'm gonna start with this side, split the difference between these two posts, and it's 92 inches, very close to eight feet. So now I'm gonna to try to get as close to a spacing as that as I can all the way around this so it looks good to the eye. All right, I went ahead and took the extra time to measure out for every post just so I could count visually check out the spacing yeah i know this is the ocd in me and uh make sure i had enough post you know sitting down doing the math sometimes it just doesn't quite add up so what i did is i have a bunch of these tent stakes so i measured them out and it's going to, we're going to be much tighter than the eight foot that i originally thought well not much tighter a few inches it's just going to make for a stronger fence so other than the corner post it looks like i need seven post here which is awesome i want it to be an odd number because i bought a uh, long t metal t post it really cut down on cost instead of doing a bunch of four by fours so i'm gonna do two t post right dead in the middle i got 10 foot four by fours and i'm gonna sink real deep and the corners i'm gonna use six by sixes from the building that blew down they're like 12 to 14 foot long most of them actually they're, i think they're 14 plus foot long so i can sink them really deep to get them really strong because I'm not going to do bracing, your typical fence bracing here, H bracing, because I'm not going to put a whole lot of tension on this fence. And let's face it, I'm not trying to hold back a 1,200 pound bull here. I'm just wanting this to be a visual fence uh, to the deer and other animals to kind of keep them from wanting to climb in there. All right, well, you probably can't see, but behind me, I now have every single post hole marked out. All the little spots for T-post and the bigger spots where I'm gonna put six by sixes and four by fours to really help reinforce the fence. They're calling for rain for the next couple of days. I'll probably release this video somewhere around Sunday. So that ought to be into the rain. And uh, they're calling for rain on into next week whenever I start back to work. So we shall see how quick I get to this. But I've got all my spots painted. The rain shouldn't bother that at all because it's already dry and uh, I can pull this string up at any time, come back, start drilling these holes, pounding these posts in and uh, we'll get fence up soon. So I'll probably have a couple of episodes coming up for the fencing, maybe another one for building my own gate and uh, we'll see what else we get into. If you, if you can see behind me, I've got uh, a lot of extra blueberry plants and a few others that Tiffany just brought back. So we're gonna do a lot of planting too. Once I get this fence up, I've got to figure out where I'm going to put all these fruit trees. So a lot of work coming up. Uh, like I said, it's going to be a lot of use of the tractor post hole digger. I only think I've ever used that once on the channel. So it's time to get that out and give it some more use. As I always say, thank you all so much for watching.